Hey guys, um, I thought I'd just quickly go through and show you how I'm using GitHub Actions um, to build artifacts for my PC boards and to um, compile code that I've got. Um, yeah, I guess really it's for my own sanity um, and it's a bit obsessive compulsive, but um, I quite enjoy having these scripts if they've uh, helped me in the past um so it, it, for instance on this repository i've got a github workflow or a github action defined and um basically anytime i commit to any of these paths on the repo github will go ahead and schedule uh, a number of jobs that I have. Um, each one corresponds to a board I've got on this project. I've got four boards. Um, I've got the main board, a breakout board, a little micro SD um, extender and a, a front panel. Um, so I run the same process on all the boards. Um, in this action, we do a checkout, uh, and that basically, if we don't give the checkout any parameters, it will check out the current repository. Um, so then we we package the schematics and the PCBs um, using a, a GitHub custom action, which I have based off let's see if I can find it this repo so uh, these guys have done an amazing job and um, basically all my uh, my scripts are based on these guys stuff um, and you should really check this repo out um, this is where all the magic happens it's a docker file uh, and it will set up all the scripts that are needed to uh, all the software um, in the Docker image with the KiCad and Python, and it'll run some Python scripts that'll allow you to um, export and ERC and DRC every time you commit. Um, so when one of these workflows run, it produces an artifact. Um, so we'd have four artifacts there. Let's have a look. Uh, have a look at the late, the most recent one. Um, so we've got our four artifacts. And if we open up one of these artifacts and have a look at what's inside, it's a zip file, just open up we've got the schematic and the PCB so we've got a PDF uh, the ERC file uh, with the, the warnings uh, yeah, okay um, so we also have the an SVG of the schematic and under the PC board side, we've got the interactive BOM HTML, which we generate. Um, and we've got the Gerbers in the zip file format and a PDF format and the DRC report. Um, let's have a look. Um, DRC report, uh, zero DRC errors found. Okay, so that's great. Um, and then the, the PDF, it's not entirely perfect because it'll print um, 16 layer boards. I think um, I haven't perfected it when you've only maybe got a double sided board. So it's a bit overkill, but it's got everything there. Um, quite a lot of layers there you can see here we've got the bottom copper side uh yeah anyway 
the Gerbers in a zip are probably the same. They've also got too many layers. See, we've got a number of copper layers here, too many. Um, so I haven't quite got this entirely right yet. But uh, I don't actually use these Gerbers at this point in time. Um, because they have those extra layers in. I think it's fine if you delete those extra layers. But um haven't automated that part perfectly. This is the interactive bomb HTML that's generated. Um, brilliant. I love this thing. If you don't know about it, check it out. It's the interactive bomb. I'll put a link in the description. Yeah, pretty handy. And it's nice not to have to do this manually. It'll just get automatically generated. Um, so, yeah, we've got a bunch of artifacts. And um, I think that's pretty much it in the artifact. Uh, so... Basically, we, we just... Um, we have a GitHub action, a custom action defined. Let's see if we can find that guy. Here we go. Um, and he, he, this is the YAML file for uh, basically defining the properties of the action. So we've got uh, the inputs for the action. So if in the inputs, we've got to tell it where the path to the KiCad project is. Where the schematic what the schematic file name is and what the pc board file name is and then the outputs um time and success so this is the actual action that will download the productize um, docker file actually i've got a customized version of that and it will use the values from the inputs to call uh, docker so that docker knows which files to use um, so we've got our uh, entry point which is the script that will run once our docker file is set up so we're basically running some schematic capture script uh, and we point it to our uh, workspace and where we want it to output and then um, we do a similar thing with the PC board we run the DRC script and we, we give it the locations and where to output and uh, if we actually want to record the screen while we're doing this so um, if it fails for any reason the only way to debug this stuff is to actually view the video that was recorded because um, what it's doing is uh, in order to produce these things in some cases uh, we have quite a uh, an interesting way of actually getting these things out of um, KiCad unfortunately because KiCad um, isn't completely automated um, so in this case what we're doing is um, pretty interesting we're creating a um, virtual X server so although the build machine that the script is running on doesn't have a display and when we kind of we create an, a virtual frame buffer and we run KiCad on a virtual frame buffer and we we force commands down its throat um like enter and uh identifying buttons to press and waiting for windows um so it's all quite um strange and uh i wish there was a better way like a, a command line interface would be my preference if I lived in an ideal world, but um, this actually works and it achieves the, the job. So that's the entry point. The, the Docker file will basically just point to the Docker um, container, um, which is on Docker. So 
um, it will basically define a ba set of base layers um, which are, are <clears throat> starting at kind of the Ubuntu and then all the layers of software that's needed to get KiCad running, all those dependencies for the frame buffer, the virtual frame buffer and recording scripts and a uh, whole bunch of stuff. It basically will just cache all that stuff. Um, and sh you can bring this Docker down locally and run the scripts yourself, um, see how it's working. Um, and I mean, most of that's how I developed or at least um, made my own customizations on the script was I just ran the Docker file locally and pointed it to my uh, PCB projects and just ran them. And then that's a lot quicker than trying to do this uh, on a build server. Um, so that's the Docker file. And what else do you need to know? Um, yeah, there's the other way that I use GitHub Actions is um, to build C++ software. So um, where I've got some libraries, I can use, um, you know, C++ software stack to, to build my, um, compile it, check it works. And in this case, it actually produces the hex file for the microcontroller. Um, so you can see all the steps that are, are involved in that. Um, you know, I'm checking out all the dependencies, so all the libraries that you need for a particular to build. Um, so that's the main one that I'm checking out. Um, and then I'm checking out, you know, the TNC cores and um, the audio library and all the dependencies so that I can, um, even the, um, the ARM toolchain dependencies um, so that I can build it using the ARM uh, GCC uh, C++ stack. Um, in fact, I think this is building not on ARM, but for actually x86. So although, oh no, wait, that's not right. It can't be, because if it's the audio platform, it's definitely not for x86. So I'm even confusing myself here a little bit with my, um, my build, because I'm not actually reading it. This is a total ad hoc video. I'm just, you know, on the fly. Um, so you can see, actually, I've got a whole bunch of tests that I run to check that my thing is doing what it needs to do. So when I check in some bad code, it'll flag it and it'll go red and say your tests don't check out. Um, so that, yeah, in a nutshell, that's how I use GitHub Actions. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy that. Cheers.